I haven't put you to sleep, have I? <laughs> yes. What I can personally commit is that racial justice will never be a second-tier issue in my campaign or in my presidency, that I will always show up, that I will always listen, and that these voices will be elevated and empowered in my White House. People think the homeless are, they're all mentally ill, they're alcoholics. I'm here to tell you the number one reason why women are homeless <coughs> is domestic violence. Can you, do you have a place for these people? Yes, and thank you for your, your advocacy. I do not have the everyday experience of walking down the street or through a shopping mall and feeling eyes on me judging me to be dangerous for no other reason than the color of my skin. I do not have that lived experience, and I recognize that I don't. And so the next best thing that I can offer, the thing that I am determined to do, is to listen to those who have, to show up, to seek to understand, and to ensure that those voices are elevated in our campaign and will be elevated in our administration. First of all, thank you for being an educator. That is public service. Too. As somebody who's married to a teacher, I feel like I get an education about education every time I come home. <laughs> and I know that it is especially humbling to be asking for the trust of African American voters. Because when we are talking about that vote, we're not just talking about an expression of preference. We're talking about a vote that was hard won through blood and sweat, literally, and within living memory. We are talking about a vote that is being suppressed even as we speak in ways from racial voter suppression in purges of the rolls to the closing of voting centers. We are asking for something that was redeemed in one of the most important movements of American history and yet has not been made equal. It's writing a blank check to the United States of America, putting your life on the and that promise works both ways. The other side of that promise is America promises to take care of those who served us in uniform. But we're not keeping that promise enough, especially when it comes to health care, uh, which, by the way, is part of what could lose funding for this president's wall that's never going to get built. <coughs> and it's why we need to make sure that uh, we are holding. Whether we are talking about the racial disparities in the war on drugs or the simple fact that we are the most incarcerated country in the world, if incarceration made a country safer, we would be the safest country on earth. It's clearly not had that effect, but it's had a very real effect on destroying lives, disproportionately black and brown lives. They haven't found um, someone who is truly fighting for their issues and truly fighting for the, um, the issues that affect them on a daily basis. Um, those with, whether... Wouldn't you like to see a president who likes to wrap himself in faith? I mean, this president cloaking himself in the language of religion, held to account by somebody who is ready to call out to fellow believers with the message that God does not belong to a political party in the United States of America. And that um, is aimed to tackle these particular issues. Um, and so, I'm oh, sorry, um, to see an 18-page comprehensive plan that, that aims to tackle these issues whether it be um, 